come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. What movie did we watch tonight? Uh, Tonight we watched Body Parts. (gasps) From the year. 1991. Directed by... Well, Eric Red is that his name? Eric Red. Eric, Eric Red. Red. Who, so, who's been yeah. on the show before? Yeah. How do we know this Eric Red? Uh, he's written and directed a few things. Um, we'd know him from. Uh, he's written The Hitcher. Mm-hmm. He's written mm-hmm. Near Dark. Mm-hmm. He has written and directed this movie, Body Parts. There he has we go. written and directed Bad Moon. Ooh. He yeah. wrote the 2007 Hitcher. Too, well, it turns out I'm a big fan well, of this guy. He wrote it, or they just used his script. Yeah. Is it ba- based on characters script, by yeah. kind of situation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was so Story much of the, so much of the yeah. script was unchaged. Yeah. They just had to give was, credit I to the original yeah. writer. Because, uh, I'm sure there were other writers in there, but he's just yeah. listed as screenplay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Okay. Turns out I'm a big Eric Red fan. Yeah. Apparently, we lay it all out like that. I'm like, oh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Bad Moon's one of the best werewolf movies out there. Bad Moon's a good time. I was yeah. We did that one. I was not here for Bad We did go back. We did near dark, yeah. yeah. And now body parts. Body parts. Welcome to the wall, Eric. I was like, what does that mean? (laughs) Okay. Um, Okay, so... uh, This movie, I feel like, has been circling the freak show for a while. Yeah. It's been on my list for a long time. Yeah, if nothing else for that memorable uh, poster. Yeah. Yeah. It's always stuck in my memory. Mm -hmm. That's a great poster. Of the many body parts connected by veins. The yeah. thing that I remember about this movie was because uh, I saw it in ninety one, yeah. but it was the trailer. Mm-hmm. The trailer uh, for this movie shows uh, the scene of Jeff Fahey on a highway, and there's a car up ahead of him with a uh, oh, tire. tire, and uh, it's just Final Destination. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I that I guess is the yeah. thing. It's like everybody <laughs> gives credit to Final Destination <laughs> yeah. too, but before that. This was the highway yep, uh, gotcha. nightmare, oh, wow. a traffic collision now, crash. Now, Colin, you, you mentioned someone was driving on the highway. Who who was driving on the highway? Jeff Fahey. Oh my gosh, Jeff Fahey oh. from with, the Lawnmower Man. Yeah, <laughs> the Lawnmower Man himself is back. Yeah. <laughs> is this his third go around, or are we only at two I for Mister? I think we're only what at what two. Well, yeah. it would have been uh, the first time I think I saw Jeff Fahey in a movie was. Um, Silverado. He was in Silverado. Right, right. And I believe that he has been in several Kevin Costner movies then over the years. I think he's in Horizon yeah. and I think he was in Wyatt he's Earp. He's in Wyatt Earp. Yeah. Was he one of the Earp brothers? Yeah. I think he's Morgan, oh. maybe. Maybe. I think. He was in yeah. um, Psycho 3. He was in Psycho 3. He, in was like, in, he was in Darkman 3. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. He was in, I remember they He's tried to- He's in Alita to, Battle Angel? He is. Yeah. Yes. Fuck. Well, because he, like Jeff Fahey he keeps working with really interesting directors. He worked with Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. right? With, uh, what was that? White Hunter Black Heart. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked, you know, like later in years, he had a career resurgence on, I think it was- Robert Rodriguez, um, when he did um, Planet Terror, mm-hmm. yes, brought Jeff Fahey back and like Michael yes. B and they were brothers, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. But at that time, I remember like all of a sudden seeing Jeff Fahey and say he was in Lost. He wasn't yeah. Lost. He was uh, at Lapidus. that he was the helicopter pilot. For yeah. Lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. beard. Which then he weird. started showing up. Then he was in uh, Battle Angel and. Um, yeah, he's like, he's been around. And so it's like he had this career in the 90s where it felt like they tried to make him into a leading man. Yep. I think this was his first like lead feature. Yeah. There was a TV series pilot that I saw produced by Joel Silver, which was called Parker Kane. Why I know all this stuff <laughs> off the top of my head, I don't know. But I remember watching. Your knowledge always <laughs> amazes me, Colin. <laughs> and it had Jeff Ahe in it, but I think this was his first feature lead, right? So they tried to give him a shot, and unfortunately it didn't work out. Why do we think it didn't work out? That's why I'm glad to see him back in yeah. movies, because yeah. he always feels like one of those guys that should have you know, been bigger. But he never was. He always makes me uncomfortable. And it's not his fault. It's no, the movie yeah, season. Right. But, but yeah. also his look. 
Yeah. He's got those wild it's eyes. It's very that, jarring. He yeah. should have it's taken unsettling more of the is. Brad Dourif route of career, right? Like, Why do you say that, it, Well, Michaela? I mean, he's in this movie. Brad Dourif is in this movie. Him, which I love him, what a combo. Like, I think sometimes you just need to accept the fact maybe you're not leading man material and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like, wrong with it. Play the hell out of a character. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Do it. But you never know when you can get that role. He has the beard now and it kind of like, it. you know, he's got the old man, you know, vibe and the beard and it, kind of mm-hmm. takes the edge off of that crazy face. Yeah, it does. I think that's what he had. Cause in psycho three and in Silverado, like he plays crazy yeah. dudes. And in this one, they, I think they play that up, you know, like oh, yeah. there's, he if you light him, he loses his mind in this movie. Yeah. 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 Why don't you do his hair like stringy down oh, yeah. in his face? You can light well, him from a certain there's angle. There's a scene like, towards the end of the movie when he's like hiding in his collar and his jacket. And <laughs> yeah. He's all like emo. Yeah. He does. It's that great. Just, uh, Quaff over. Yeah, why does he start hunching around this movie like Dark Man? He does. He's going nuts. (laughs) He does. And that's the first thing I thought. He's like Dark Man now. He's like Dark Man. I always thought he'd be one of those guys that would suddenly have like a Tarantino resurgence. Yeah, well, you think? Well, I think that was the Robert was Rodriguez the, yeah. thing because yeah. Robert Rodriguez, I mean, not only that they, he's worked with Quentin Tarantino and their friends, but yeah. Robert Rodriguez tends to collect people like Tarantino yeah. does yeah. as well. Yeah. Old actor or, you know, people who had a certain mm-hmm. uh, time where they were bigger. Feels like he, he should have been back. in a Rob Zombie movie at this point too, right? I could see him being like a hell of a One of them. It's oh, like yeah. either Tarantino, <laughs> Rodriguez, or... Or, uh, I know. I was like, I think he's more classy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to replace, replace Richard Brake with Jeff Fahey and all of those roles, and maybe I'm more interested. I mean, yes. <laughs> so, um, so who is Jeff Fahey in this movie? He is Bill... Krushank. 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 I got a question for you. Bill Krushank. You were, you were saying earlier, did you ever look this up? Like, we were saying that um, this is written by Eric Red. Yes. And there's another screenwriter. Co-writer, yeah, yeah. But you said this is maybe based on a, was it a previous script or a novel or something like that? Based on the novel Choice Cuts. <laughs> by, nice. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, I can't even pronounce that name. Uh, did anybody here speak French? Where are we looking? Uh, where, where are we looking? You know, where it says written. We have a physical Bleu, media release choice cuts, this. We're studying for the quotes. The, the, the it's case. a hyphen. It looks. It may just be a last name. Yeah, figure that one out. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not even close to a first name there. All right. So it's based on a I on, a, on a pre-existing novel. Yeah, though. and I think I think, might, well, I think the it's Boileau. Boileau. I think that might be two authors' names put together in a hyphen who Boileau write together. Nosiek? Yeah, uh, I think. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Okay. Um, Did my best. <laughs> This is a movie of Frankensteinian science gone awry. Yes. It is a hyphenate. That is both their last names of the book. Got Trice it. Cuts. Cool. Pierre Beaulieu and uh, Thomas Nosiak. Nosiak. What year was it written? Uh, like 25 years prior. To okay. Wait, hold on. Let me. I'll Choice look that up. Cuts. Oh, I thought you were looking at the. I'll look, I'll look it no. Up, I'll look it Choice <laughs> Cuts is a great title. It, it, it truly is, isn't mm-hmm. it? That's fantastic. Choice Cuts. So, um, yeah. So, what's the bonus features on a Dexter DVD are called? Yeah. Choice cuts. But, yes. Do they are called or should be called? They should be. I don't know. Yeah, if they are. for sure. I have physical media of Dexter. I should check and see, yeah. <laughs> see what's called. 1968. 68. Yeah. That's and the, and the little like video him. clip of the of the scene is just him girl on a stage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes. perfect. I missed this. Perfect. What'd you say? What? I said that choice cuts should be the name of the Dexter like behind the scenes features. <laughs> yeah. And when you DVD and when you click on it, it's him girl on a stage. Yeah. Like in the intro. I think perfect. You say that. I think there has been behind the scenes stuff that has been labeled choice cuts. I don't remember what movie it's from, but it has been. Like Friday the third for something. Or something well, they like had that, like yeah. a they had like a online web comic for Dexter that was called like Dexter Early Cuts or something like that, uh, and it was the prequel, which is yeah, kind of what we're getting now in the series that's coming out later this year. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Well, so who is Jeff Fahey or Fahey in this movie? What's his character and what's going to happen to him? Uh, he's a I want to say criminal psychologist. He's a psychologist, right? Doing the study. Yeah, of... he's a professor in a in a. Um, Criminal psychologist, right? Yeah. The study of evil, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. He interviews. Is that what it is? I uh, kind of. Uh, it's it's the criminal mind he's looking at, or the yeah. the, the psychopathic mind, maybe. Because we were introduced to him. He's doing an interview with, um, oh. in prison with a killer. Oh, uh, a man that we are putting on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Uh, a man who deserves it based on this performance mm-hmm. this because performance. he fucking nails it. Well, that was a really well written scene. I yeah. thought the dialogue that, that they fantastic. gave him. Uh, in that opening scene where he's being interviewed, it's uh, Paul Ben Victor is the actor's okay. name. 
Okay. Uh, he acted the hell out of he that He really scene. did. And, like, you oh. felt his, like, you felt the, like, I don't want to do this, but this is the way I am. Can you fix me? Can you fix yeah. me, Doc? Like, yeah. that. that's going on is real. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's 100%. It's really good. Just <laughs> well, the you, back and forth, you have the seen conflict, him before. the emotion. You've seen him before on yeah. movies that we've covered. He's, he's played a cop before like, somewhere. He's one of those guys that's popped up in so yeah. many things. Well, yeah. he was in cool world as a valet or oh, cool no world. <laughs> and he was also <laughs> like where he's awesome cool world fuck that movie <laughs> but you Good remember him, him no. as the uh in the mexican standoff at the end of true romance he's the guy who doesn't speak english <laughs> it's, okay. Okay. Speak english. it's been so long since i yeah. saw true right romance. so long since I, the I only, know, I these are very old episodes right the, the only yeah. scene i remember is christopher walken and and what's his name uh, sitting there before he blows his brains out i need to out. revisit that Dennis movie Hopper. i don't oh, remember thanks it to mf mad for uh, uh putting uh, thank you, sir. Paul on the wall. All uh, on the wall. We're also <laughs> um, we're putting two other guys. Gene Mack. This is Hallway, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. He okay. was uh, one of the guys who uh, got into the bar fight. Uh, okay. Okay. He was also, I think, he was with the pool cue. He mm-hmm. was also a guard in In the Mouth of Madness, okay. and he was uh, in Johnny Mnemonic. You remember? Amazing. Uh, great. Was he the dolphin? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Detective Jackson. Uh, which I think was just like one of the cops in not the guy in the hat. No, not the hat. No, not the detective. Because okay. I know him. Zakes, 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 okay. That's the rifle guy. Yeah. Okay. Guarding the surgery. But, uh, James Kidney was Detective Jackson. He was also an attendant in Curtains, and he was in ICU. Oh wow! Uh, so thank you, MF <laughs> Man, thank you, for sir. Uh, <laughs> inducting those folks to the Saturday Night Freak Show yes. wall. So wall and hall. A mild mannered. Criminal psychologist yes. slash professor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, losing his faith in no. he's, he's having a crisis of faith. He's in that uh, conversation with his wife in bed. He's like, well, uh, this I, is he's, ha- he's having a crisis of his own contribution mm-hmm. yeah. to, to what he does. Yeah, not maybe yeah. faith in himself a little yeah. bit, but not, but not. Well, his he, he's like you know, am I ever going to be able to actually cure any? I'd love to be yeah. able to be able to cure one person. One person yeah, he's yeah. Ha- he's having uh, standard imposter syndrome. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. It's like, uh, I go I what, go what through this all... every time I paint something. <laughs> every fucking questioning time. what's what's this yeah. all for if I can't cure one person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, does that tie into the theme of the movie? I don't think it really does, but that's what he's thinking of the night before. I mean, it kind of does because he's like you know what am I doing? You know, who the fuck am I if I can't do my fucking job? You know, I think that's what he's kind of feeling. And who is he is a big crucial part of this movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, there you go. Who yeah. is he? Who am I? Yeah. That's true. There you go. Um, connection. And then in the next morning on his way to work, he is involved in a horrific accident on the highway. Horrific accident. We, yeah, this is when the movie becomes Final Destination for a good minute and a half. Truly does. Yeah. Now, you guys all remember, uh, because he does get into the accident, the car the car in front of him, which he sees the... Which has the, the worst spare tire of Worst spare tire ever. <laughs> well, somebody yes. didn't uh, torque those screws no. down at all. Yeah. <laughs> How does the driver not feel this is happening? Uh, yeah, at least, like, it's they a, should boy, at that point. That's what I imagine would happen if I ever changed changed a tire <laughs> it just wobbles right off yeah, at pretty much 70 miles an hour yeah yep um so i mean the tire does fly off at him and there's a lot of swerving and everything but yeah. he does end up avoiding a collision and does not end up coming to a stop behind yeah. his car but the semi behind him mm-hmm. a little more trouble but that's a good that's a good way to do it right i mean yes. you build a suspense you see that it's coming then mm-hmm. it happens but safety then it doesn't happen you're like oh. <laughs> then, yeah. no here comes and the then, semi and that moment that look on his face and he's like i can't do shit right now yeah. i'm about to get hit mm-hmm. yeah. and so he gets uh launched through the window mm-hmm. and then in a moment of happenstance uh good slash bad luck the stuntman was not supposed to be launched 50 feet into the air that we oh, saw boy. in the movie what? but was <gasps> without a harness oh, oh no. jesus but was not injured Really? Oh my god! He was not injured, and so that is the shot. So they kept the it in wow. because, uh, because he ends up. He's like on the back of the thing, and the back of the car gets gets flung forward, and he's on it at such a uh, uh, an angle that the momentum launches him into he goes the air. Amazing! High. Yeah. High. Wow! Is, does this scene get referenced in Fall Guy at all? Because that movie's all about stuntmen, right? Yeah. This guy People almost put died. his life on the line. Yeah. Yeah. That stuntman was also, was also like, "This is on my reel." Yeah, yeah. this right, is right. it. And use it as he was being like, launched. He's yeah. like, "Use this, use tank. this tank. You have to, you have to." Use 
left it. <laughs> my dying wish. Yeah. Luckily, he was fine. So this is where you get to find these little moments of uh, forgotten stunts, you know, that yeah. are like, holy, like the guy in Metal Storm. Yeah, right? the guy, that guy's dead. Yeah. I'm still yeah. convinced he's dead. Well, this guy looked like, uh, yeah, well, I'm yeah. glad you checked up on him. Yeah, I, yeah, I can okay. uh, confidently say I will he's... not get gestalt by this man. He's <laughs> well, I took the uh, Ernesto, the gestalt pause, and so. checked on it. <laughs> so uh, old Bill Krushank. Krushank. Krushank uh, ends up. R U S H A N K. Krushank. Mm -hmm. He ends up losing his arm. He does. In the accident. Oof. So what do you do when you lose your arm? Okay, the position his wife is put in. This is the I true mean, start of the uh, horror movie, right? Yeah. Yes. Like the amount of information she's hit with in such a short amount of time and then having to make yeah. a, the worst decision. Which it's is like, it's, like a theme of this it's movie. Literally, yeah. It's literally the doctor sitting down and being like, okay, well... We saved him. However, his arm is fucked. Yeah. Yeah. I can give him a dead person's arm, but you have to decide in three right seconds. Now. Right. Every this felt, second sign matters. right now. This yeah. felt very Robocop ish, this yeah. kind of scene yeah. based on the arm being gone. Like, and also the camera work in the operating room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's got a that kind of look. distorded like, um, is, anamorphic. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, she's getting like, information. This is a trial. Like, this is a trial procedure that no one's ever heard of, but and we're going to give it a shot. But you have three seconds to decide. And if you he's not try. conscious, so he has no yeah. knowledge or say in this. It's yeah. completely on her. Um, and she gets like two minutes to digest all this information. Yep. And yeah, what yeah. Would you do? I, I was just going to say, what, what would you guys do? Would you sign off on this procedure, or would you say no? Give him a fake arm. I would sign off on the procedure. Yeah, I would have signed off. On the I think procedure. I would have, and then because there's always the option. You can always to, go back. Yeah, yeah. You can there's always, always go the back option to, the to get the hook. Yeah, okay. But there's <laughs> <a po> <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> always an option to get the hook. Well, you right. would. But there's a possibility to right. Right. There's right. A possibility that the arm works. What would you do? You'd be like no. I mean, I, I've gone back and forth on it while watching this movie. There, like, surgery is no joke, and for it to yeah. be like, a, like an experimental surgery, right? It, like that could really fuck you up if that doesn't take. And you're right, <laughs> and because they're in such a, an emergent position, his arm is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and who knows if just sewing it up and saving that is a safer option to go than trying to go through a whole other procedure and get an arm on there. Well, she right. said. So there's that. We yeah. can't save the arm. So well, no, yeah. right. Yeah. But again, like, but he but could be. It could be safer so to just sew him up and be done. It's right. And he's got so no arm. risky. Very it's risky. so risky. I feel so like it, that, I yes. feel like it would be a huge risk for his life. Like. Yes. If his body rejects that, he could go into like shock. That could be the he, thing that be, kills him. Yeah, it, it and could she could kill be him. responsible for that. Yeah, that's instead insane. of saving his life. You're yep. right. So I feel like they're. I, I don't know that I would sign that. That's a good point. But we also saw Lindsay Lohan get a robot arm in previous episode. I know who killed me. Uh, you know what? You I, ch I changed episode, my answer. I know. Uh, before you said that, I was just like, "What happened to yeah, Lindsay remember Lohan?" Yeah, we saw her. I, like, I missed arm. this in the news. Why did like, she I, have a robot? I arm? I knew she had a problem. The problem was she never had it charged. Remember, <laughs> she always right. forgot to charge it in that movie. I fucking forgot and this And she was movie. crushing wow. stuff with it because she couldn't control it. So those are the hazards of the other I side. Of the I remember argument. that she didn't have an arm, and I think and I remember there's a, a sex scene where we arm. see a, Yes, uh, did she mm -hmm. not, yeah, because okay. she got a dry iced off. Go back and watch. <laughs> I know who killed me, and then listen to our episode on it. It's yeah. a wacky, It's wacky an American movie. Giallo. Yeah. That is a yeah. crazy movie. Having experienced more Giallos, I think going back to watch it would be more interesting now. Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy fucking movie. It's crazy movie. So he's so the doctor, right? So they wheel in he, in the operating room. They see a donor being brought in, yes. but the donor is surrounded by or accompanied by a large group of shotgun wielding uh, police officers. Like Thirty of them. <laughs> yeah. Why? We and we we it's hinted at earlier when uh, his wife uh, Kim Delaney, who's also in this movie, I like Kim Delaney because yeah, she was in NYPD Blue. I th oh, I think Is so. The, it, yeah, I think so. Um, one of the cop shows. Um, but uh, as she's sitting there in the in the lobby waiting to hear the news of her husband, like t t uh, ten cops with shotguns walk past her, and you're kind of like, "Oh, what's what's going on there?" And then they show up later in the operating room, surrounding. Uh, you know, what do uh, they think is going to happen? Why? Why the cops? Why are there? Because why? well, we find out later. It's because the uh, the criminal's not dead. Okay. Apparently. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That this is. Sense. Which, yeah. Okay. I was like, but at this point in the movie, you're just like, what yeah. The at this point yeah. in the movie, we don't yeah, know that. Yeah. We no. don't find that out until yeah. later. And we're getting our, our like first extremely shocking moment yeah. because yeah. again, everything's a little off when you got 20 people with shotguns standing around in an operating yeah. room. Right. Those are not sterile. I'm going right. to say that. Yeah. Especially because, to our understanding, <laughs> the only person alive at this moment is Jeff Fahey. So right. right. Like, so we don't know what. Weird. Like, yeah. yeah. This is. Uh, yeah. I mean, that is pretty funny that they're all wearing scrubs but carrying shotguns. Yeah. Very funny. That's kind of funny. And so, but also Jeff Fahey's being is being brought in here. His arm is gone in a, in gory fashion mm -hmm. it is out in the open but he is awake 
Yeah. As we were, yeah. as he is being it's brought wild. into this, and it is wild yeah. because you, you figured like you should be asleep a little, at least a little bit before the being wheeled mm-hmm. in here. But he's seeing everything, and so he's seeing kind of no, the. No, they put you out in the room. Yeah, but like. But at the very least, don't have him look. Have I, was like, you know, I was like, however, yeah. but they should put him out before they cut off the dude's arm. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. They don't cut off his arm, Holly. They, there's true, there's right? a saw that's, that's going, true. and I think they're cutting off the arm, in which I was going to criticize them. Like, shouldn't there be a little pre-surgery, like you know, separate some veins and stuff? Maybe You always figure bit? that there's something more delicate in that procedure than, yes, than, than yeah. sawing it off. Some kind of industrial it. saw and just going yeah. right, yeah. right yeah. through but the... It's, yeah. But it's the saw you think it is, and we think an arm's coming off, <laughs> but no... No. It's the man's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's decapitation. Like, yeah. What are we doing? Well, then all the cops like leave the room. And it's mm-hmm. like, all right, oh, <laughs> he's dead. I guess the uh, he's dead. <laughs> they couldn't walk away. Care of. So he was a very dangerous guy, apparently. But this is all really kind of foreshadowing. The movie's not telling you at this point what's going on. No, right. And you guys had the same experience that I had when I saw the movie <laughs> because I heard all of everybody was like, well, I'm confused right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's wow. going on? What's it happening? did. It happens at a very um, like crucial kind of part in the movie. Mm-hmm. You're still within like 20 minutes. And at this yeah. point, you're like, I'm not sure. And, and also it's kind of shot like a. Uh, like it might be a dream or something, right? And that's what I was wondering, especially when the, the reveal is that the head's coming off. I'm like, is this a, a like a yeah. dream he's having during? Certain- it's not. Yeah, it's not at all. But he does get the new arm. He does and uh, and we go back to the theme of being told uh, critical and tra- maybe traumatizing information as soon as you wake up. Oh yeah. my god! This yeah. guy's awake for ten seconds before she's like, "Hey, your <laughs> arm is gone." <laughs> We gave you a new one, though. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, you want to know, like, as soon as you can. Mm, no, that's a Ease lot to into process. It. Yeah, <laughs> I would, a little I would lube. To, to, all you got to tell them is that you, your arm was really badly injured in the accident. Leave it at that for a little bit. And yeah. then lead into, so right. we had to replace it. Right. Yeah. So this is not your arm. Yep. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Mm-hmm. Those aren't your you know, fingernails. But how does the, how does the graft uh, uh, work out? After some... Long therapy, it, it seems. Therapy uh, montage. Yeah, therapy <laughs> montage. Uh, it seems to do quite well, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, certain aspects better than he thought it would happen because he's swinging a weight around a little bit, a little five pound weight. Mm-hmm. But eventually, uh, normalcy returns, we'll say. And he gets to go home to his mm-hmm. loving wife <laughs> and his two kids. Yes. And so, as you do, you got to test out the arm. <laughs> uh, well, in all aspects of life, <laughs> did not go the way I thought it would. Though I thought it, for sure we were gonna get like a like a jerking off scene. Like thought for sure we'd get. I can see how some this stranger version, set this, up, you right? Know? Well, this version of it's a little more easy to go into it, than just being like, "Hmm, I wonder," and then just it's just, that is just a different no tone. music that's and, different and just, tone for sure and just sound that's idle hands. That's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. we were watching yeah. the time, but that would be yeah. an idle hands joke. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, it's trying to be like a scene where he's like reconnecting with his wife, right? It's their yeah. first night together after yeah. coming back from the... Take this hand for a test drive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not oh, saying boy. that, right? So the movie doesn't actually... But we, like we were saying, I don't know. they're going... I think they're pretty much saying it. <laughs> he, yeah, he uses that hand and he... Well, yeah. Specifically. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. they don't... They're not talking about it the way that we're talking no, about it. You know what I mean? It's like... They're doing everything but talking about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. The way we're talking about it. Yeah. yeah. But then there's no payoff. It's not, not set up as like... I think it was for her. No. The next yeah. morning, they're all over each other. Which, yeah. Like, the they're really that happy. Really good, Very happy. So. They're making out in front of the kids. <laughs> the yeah. kid, they're so happy the kids know what happened. Yeah. yeah. That's how happy they are. Yeah. So the no arm mystery. does have superpowers after all. Yep. It, yeah. Apparently He said he was so. better at some things yeah. than before, so, you know. Um, yep. All right, guys. Here, I'm going to tie this off. Chop it off. <laughs> so then, um, I believe he goes to back to um, in, to work, and he goes to interview the um, the inmate uh, uh, death yeah. row. Yes. And what what happens there? There is um, when we're first introduced to the to the arm. I'm going to say <laughs> you, you can see a, a, a light tattooing on the wrist. And I so, thought it was maybe a medical tattoo or something because it was a uh, you know whatever. But yeah, something left over from it. But again, he, he he's coming back in there. He, he's uh, what, what is the inmate uh, makes a comment on the way he looks because mm-hmm. he looks like shit at this yeah. point. He's been having some kind of, eh, a little bit of visions of certain things. He's a little disturbed, but he's like, I want you to trust me, Faye. He says. And he reaches out his hand to shake it, and they realize that they both have the same 
matching tattoo on their wrists. And he's like, and the inmate starts to freak out. He's like, you only get those, only stone cold killers get that shit on death row, my mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. Get away from me. The stone, the killer, the mm -hmm. psychotic is yelling, get away from me mm -hmm. in this scene. And also very convincing. Again, mm -hmm. this yeah. guy's in two scenes and he's great. He's yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah, I guess you touched on it, but this is kind of preceded by, I mean, I, I suppose it's the idea that like, you know, everything seems like it went well. Yeah. He's got the function back in his arm. Mm -hmm. His wife his loves happy. it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he can go out and play catch with his kids in the street. <laughs> and then there's, then you start to have like, okay, it's a horror movie. Just so throwing that the, football through kids. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's the Don't inklings. Don't let him hear darts, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> right. But the inkling starts to happen that there might be something wrong. This is before that scene. So yeah. you said he has visions. Yeah, he's kind of seeing things, I think, at night, and uh, he's seeing, like, the innards of his arm, or a arm, like the muscle, the red tissue, kind of like the credit scene we saw at the very beginning of this. Oh, yeah, the credits were pretty good. They yeah. were, like, great. Uh, like, like, anatomy like, illustrations. Yeah. yeah. It looked like, um, you know, Reanimator has uh, that type of credit scene. Yeah. It's all black with the illustrations, yeah. but that's more hyped up. This was, I haven't seen, like, an actual opening credit scene mm -hmm. in a while <laughs> set yeah. to you know orchestral music and all sets the tone so he's having these flashes and all that and he's like there might be something right maybe even of uh, of, of of people being hurt at this point this is all we see is you know uh, uh necks being snapped and what have you you know people in pain um so he's seen kind of flashes of that okay but if from a viewer standpoint then i mean how like, how mysterious is this to you? Are you aware, like, well, clearly you got a serial killer's arm. You know, it's like, okay, and then he's starting to have the dreams of the serial killer. Well, whatever. having not, um, I don't know, we've probably discussed this is, it's the Jeff A. movie where he gets a serial killer's hand. Like, that is how, <laughs> how we have talked and described yeah. the movie, which I didn't necessarily know if that was exactly true because I've never, I haven't watched a trailer for this or anything like that. I, I, I've only known of the movie. Jeff Hayes in it and we think he gets a, a body part that does, that goes bad. Okay. And there so is more to the movie than that. It turns out. Yeah, but. Very, very much so. <laughs> very much so. But basically you're just thinking like, all right, he got a new hand. This shit's going on. It's the hand. It's the arm. Okay. Did he at any point ask where this hand came from? Not before he starts asking where like the hand came from. Like he was in therapy I mean? this like, whole time. Yeah. Never once yeah. thought to ask right. where the arm came yeah. from. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they would have lied anyways, but she would have. Yeah. But I'm, he never once thought, well, hey, what's the story behind this? Yeah, I wonder. In, if I, in, yeah, if I got something from a donor, I anything, need to know everything. anything, I would want to know as much as possible. Yeah. But I wonder what the, what the legality of that is. Yeah. Like whether you are allowed to know where these things come from. Because there's something with that that yeah. I think you have to sign off. Or I, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking on my ass here. Mm -hmm. But I think there's some legality of what, the, what you can reveal mm -hmm. to a patient of where things come from. But you see enough stories online where, you know, um, the dad whose daughter died meets the guy who got his daughter's heart, and they yeah. meet up, and they he yeah. But usually, it's like yeah. they track it down because it's like, well, he died the same day that she got right. The, no, so but it's, and that's the know. thing; they have to track it down. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think this information is given too freely. Yeah, I don't I think track so. it. <laughs> but he's because I guess there was you know there was a a couple of scenes here where it seemed like all he had to do was kind of explain a little bit more. Yeah. But, you know, like with the guy, like, where'd you get that tattoo? You know, get away from me. And you're like, well, all he has to do is like, I haven't you heard? I've been out for like three months. I got, I was in an accident. I got an right. arm transplant. But then he's trying to, <laughs> he's trying to explain himself to a psychotic, which uh, okay. uh, I understand why he wouldn't. But so it's then also he, his job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's been yeah. missing for yeah. Like three months, yeah. he's, so been, then, he's been wanting to get through to this guy, and now he's just like fucked. Yeah, I would explain. I would explain. Yeah, I mean, he should. Um, he goes That's a guy to inconsolable at that point, though. Yeah. I did like his uh, method. Right, it's like uh, so. There's something. There's something funky with the arm. I'm gonna go down to the fingerprint lab and get them to fingerprint me. This makes sense. Which Great again, idea. it seemed like the That's fingerprint guy didn't know that uh, he had a different they, arm. He had a different arm because. I guess that was the thing that we missed is like when he has this operation and he comes out, there's like all the press in the city mm -hmm. is there. Right. Um, to, you know, so he becomes instantly famous. Right. Because this yeah. is uh, obviously is one of the first of its kind transplants. Uh, is the happen. first of its kind. Is, is it the for the, yeah. Is that what yeah. So it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. And the doctor, she's like, you know, okay, it's really her. She did it. You know, this is an amazing. Dr. Webb. Yep. Yeah. So that damn web. He finger he gets fingerprinted, and what does he learn? 
he learns that his arm has gotten into some trouble. His arm has killed people. This is a great <laughs> way to reveal this information, right? It is. It really Through is. the fingerprint. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you get I the like printout it. on the screen. Yeah, of like, like the murder, 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 <laughs> yeah. murder. Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Murder, Arson murder, murder. Arson was in there. Arson yeah. was in there, yeah. And then it said murder law enforcement. And I was like, ooh, he right. escalated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it yeah. says, it gets to the bottom and says, uh, um, date of uh, set to be executed yeah. and then executed this day. Yeah. 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 Dun, dun, dun. We're like, okay, right. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it's revealed well. Um, yep. Yep. Well, you got your sound than... effects and your readouts and your screen like yes. you wanted, which is nice. And I think it's also around there that, no, then he goes to confront the doctor, right? Is that when, is it after he punches his own kid? He's like, I want this that arm off. Dude, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we Rolf. all were like, oh, when that happened, because he <laughs> really looked like he really hit he that did. kid. That yeah. kid went yeah. off, like, up in the air a little <laughs> yeah. bit. It's like, all right, good job. Good stunt work, kid. The idea that they're putting in is like, like uh, Ash Williams' uh, hand, <laughs> yes. the Just like it. arm has a mind of its own. Yes. Um, I believe it tries to strangle his wife while she sleeps at yep. some mm-hmm. point, you know, mm-hmm. uh, causing a rift between them. But he uh, goes to see the doctor, you know, saying like, okay, I'm having, th- this isn't right. I'm having, uh, you know, these nightmares and all that. Actually, I think at this point she's, no, she she's does. Vague. She's vague. Like, no, no, no. She's vague at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And she's I like, mean, yeah. Know, See, you need to see a psychiatrist. I can't help you with this. Right, because she's, she know. yeah, they don't reveal that she knows it's from a serial killer quite yet, or yeah. that she did it on purpose anyway, Until and and then he follows her to kind of see um, what else she's been doing at this point in the hospital. And so we start seeing, meeting up with uh, people who have also gotten body parts from the same body. Dun, dun, dun. We got legs, <laughs> and we got Brad Dorf. Who got the other arm? Yes. <laughs> we, we're laughing because Brad Dorf is excellent in this. Yes. Well, he's excellent in like everything he's in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but he, he always plays the same character. Oh yeah, but it's so good. But yeah. I didn't expect like uh, you know serial killer appendage Avengers here. You know, Basically. like I, I didn't know we were gonna get anyone other than yeah. You know, I mean, Fahey in I, this. it gives totally different uh, uh, meaning to Avengers Assemble. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well done. Thank you, thank you. Well, the first guy is, uh, legs. yeah, legs. he he got the leg transplant. Yeah. Legs. Was he like a serviceman or something like that? Or he had the f- look of it, didn't he? Or basketball oh, no, some, something or something. fell on his legs and then crushed him, and then they got, yeah, some accident. I don't know if he was an athlete or a serviceman beforehand. It yeah. would make sense if he was, and then he's getting back into it, and he wouldn't want to give it up. So he gets the legs. Yep. Um, Fahey then began. He can slam dunk now. He can slam. <laughs> he can super dunk. jump. Like, yeah, yeah. There yeah, is like a little Mario extra power. oomph to these body parts mm-hmm. as yeah. we are learning throughout the movie, which is fun. Yeah, he can dunk. He uh, Jeff Fahey ends up following, like obsessively following these people around. I think that's because he's sitting there going, like, "Well, I'm having." Some kind of psychological issue here. I have yeah. thoughts that aren't mine. Yep. I right. think the arm is responsible. So I want to see if these other people are also having the same problem. Right. Yep. So but instead, this dude can now dunk. And the other dude is now a really, really good painter. Well, right. He was a painter before. But right. But so they got superpowers. They and he superpowers. got nothing. Yeah. Right. Right. He had the superpower to he, punch his hey, in the face. Hey, he got to satisfy his wife. Right? He got the that superpower. Was superpower. <laughs> Sexual pleasure. That's well, a superpower, in my opinion. <laughs> Brad uh, Dorf is like, you just got to go with it, man. Stop being. Brad Dorf. Stuff. Brad Dorf's in like when they, he goes to to meet again. He's meeting the members who have gotten these body parts, and he knocks on Brad Dorf's door, who lives in uh, the um, the Jeff Goldblum fly. Right. right. All yeah. painters live in lofts. All painters live in lofts, with <laughs> sliding doors and everything. Holly, what are you doing? Find I'm the loft. doing it wrong. Yeah, clearly. Um, also, let we, we get you a new arm and. Uh, yeah. No. Let's do it. Go. I'm in. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> when he's introduced, I mean, he just slides in and he's like, yeah. And and, and Jeffy. He, he's like, I'm here to talk to you. He's like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's very sarcastic in this moment. He's like, uh, hey, I got uh, I got the other. Uh, uh, I got the other. You got that arm. I got the other one. He's like, ah, you want to arm wrestle? Like, what? <laughs> it's like, he's, it's he's, pretty he's, funny. <laughs> it's, he's very funny in this role. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very good. Like just that whole back and forth between them like can we get more of this like more yeah. scenes with these guys well he doesn't seem to be tortured no 
He's he's found the benefit of it, or at least he, yeah. since he's getting the arm, he's, he's like, like, "No, come on in. Let me show you what I've been up to." Right. And he's like, "See all these amazing paintings? This I'm is what I used to doing. Do. Fucking awesome yeah. right now." Yeah, but I guess what that what we're saying is that he is also experiencing the same visions that Jeff Fahey is. Yeah, he's just an artist, so it's a little more normal for him. And he can, right. well, he can <laughs> right. interpret it. I guess. Right. So yeah. Or right, putting it to good use. Yeah. He's Jeff Fahey can't do anything in, with it. In painting. Yeah. He can. And so can the other guy with the, well, I don't know, he's not seeing visions or anything, but he's getting use out of, more use out of uh, this than Jeff Fahey is. Jeff Fahey is just getting the visions. The other guy can dunk and the other one's an artist. Although the other guy, the guy with the legs, he does have uh, an incident that Jeff Fahey witnesses because he's he obsessively following these guys around. Well, I think at this point he just wants to talk to him. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, the other guy is in traffic and his leg just stomps on the gas and he can't control it and nope. nearly causes a collision. And uh, Jeff A., he wanders up to the car and like, I just want to talk to you about, yeah. you know, even this conversation is really it's like really well written, well acted. Like they both seem like feels very uh, real for the situation that was going on. Like yeah, his kind of I can panic. See this, I can see this conversation actually playing out. This yeah. Way. And it's it's just like because they're both like being polite and civil, but it's also awkward because it's like this sounds ridiculous, but right, this is how we're connected. It gets it's right. it flows well. It yeah. does, and you would almost expect the guy in the car to think Jeff Hay he was more nuts and be like, "Get away from me, man!" But he's no, he's very uh, nice, accepting of mm -hmm. what's going on. He's like, "Hey, we both went through some shit. I'm happy with this. You know, you just go with it, man." Like I didn't have legs before for three years. Now I got them, and I'm gonna do whatever I can mm -hmm. you know, to make the best out of this. Yeah, it's coming from a real human place between the two, considering what this <laughs> what this movie is. Yeah, it's very grounded. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't know if it was going to be, especially when we, what we get to later in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we, it's not You're so grounded. It's not going to go. Not gonna where, be yeah, it gets less <laughs> grounded. Let's say. Well, and, and this with the with the guy with the legs, this scenario seems more like explainable. Mm. You know, because yeah, like because nerves. like I, I can see where he would have some nerve damage where he's just like all of a sudden head doesn't have control of his leg. Right. right. Like and that it, makes more right. sense. Yes. Makes yeah. sense. I wouldn't think anything uh, right. uh, above and beyond weird. You had a double leg transplant. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be some nerve issues. Maybe I wouldn't yeah. think anything sinister. Is going well, he on. never asks him, is he like experiencing nightmares or visions or anything? Right. You know, it's like, is, <laughs> are you able to I pleasure your did. wife? <laughs> I thought, well, I thought he did ask if he was having visions, or he said he was having visions. Yeah, I think so. And, and he may have asked it. And the, uh, he just kind of brushed over it like, well, you know, I just want to move on with life. Mm. Yeah. So the next major... This guy can, like, pleasure his wife with his knees. Like, that's, <laughs> that, that's just <laughs> a... <laughs> I, well, yeah. I, that's just a thing that comes through with each body part, mm -hmm. that's just a special power they have. But we were no talking about it. when we watched this movie, <laughs> does this mean, like, he's just going to get the desire to run and kick? someone to death like because the evil <laughs> but that happens yeah honestly i thought he we'd find him strangled with his own legs yeah. right <laughs> just, i thought how he was gonna end up because this movie tells us that it's the blood the blood's evil and it, so if it gets into you then you're like the blood of the flesh is yeah, what he well, said. yeah well, and flesh. that's the question jeff yeah. he keeps asking yeah. himself is like where does evil live mm -hmm. like because Which we're experiencing i kind these of things. love that philosophical like question that he's asking mm -hmm. yeah i kind of love that right and it, it, yeah. i mean it goes along uh, with the you know uh, mm -hmm. the kind of the theme of the movie and everything and you're just like yeah like what i mean because we'll never know this is all just like, yeah. like philosophical stuff that you know can't mm -hmm. necessarily be answered right but it's fun to explore what that could be yeah and it's you know what he does for a living yeah where does the evil come from right yeah so it's like a haunted arm basically yes. it's got, it's got yeah. a ghost attached to it or yeah. something it's like did he say something about um igor I, what do you know about this <laughs> <laughs> this is, igor should be a guest on this episode right. he of should be all of his body parts are haunted well, yeah. somebody, <laughs> yeah. i think it was the doctor said you need you know it was you need to talk to a psychiatrist because you need to you know get you make your soul whole or something like that. And then mm. it was like, okay, so the soul fractured because you've got somebody else's, you know, uh, body Jeff, part. Right. Jeff A even talks about the soul of my arm. Like he's, <laughs> there's an extra soul in that arm. Yeah. <laughs> well, he goes, uh, I think well, this and, is and where. Yeah. And I kind of, I was kind of wondering like, okay, so the other two aren't really experiencing what he's experiencing. Is the like the end game of the movie going to be that it's just his own psychology that is turned on him and he's been evil the whole time? See, that's where that's I what I was thought, wondering. I, yeah, well, you know, I guess there was enough setup that, but at this point, right in the movie, and we're like a considerable 
part of the running time into it. Yeah, yeah it's only an hour and a half movie. We're Thank finding God. out, like, okay, we know this Charles uh, Fletcher maybe is Fletcher. the killer, right? Uh, yeah. Who is killed? We know, okay, so it's a bad guy. He killed 25 people. We have his arms, the three guys, right? Yep. Uh, his arms and legs. Yep. And you're like, okay, and 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 uh, Jeff Fahey is experiencing visions. So then the conflict, like, what's the resolution going to be? Like, as it's set up at this point, well into the movie, yeah. we're like, okay, so he has to somehow just overcome a psychological issue. I guess that's uh, right, Holly. This is where what you're saying, right? It's like that kind of seems where the movie is headed. Yeah. Yes. And then I think the incident that happens here is that he strangles his wife while she sleeps. Mm -hmm. uh, she yeah. freaks out as you would. Uh, he says, okay, I'm going to have to leave the house because I don't yeah. feel like I'm safe around the kids and all right. that. Right. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And so here we go. And then he meets up with, he goes and stays in a hotel. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Records a very upbeat, uh, uh, a very peppy message on his answering machine. <laughs> yeah. And we introduce another character. It reminded me of George Costanza's message. <laughs> yeah. Believe yeah. it or not, George. George is not home. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so, good. so good. <laughs> well, we introduce another character into the movie at this point. That is the police detective, right? Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Not yeah, he gives a little exposition, but he's not really uh, 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 I don't know uh, a factor in the movie. He doesn't yeah he doesn't do much to move anything around within the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, he's yeah, like an he's, escort. Yeah, but yeah basically, <laughs> right? and like, for he, I mean, he's there for because he's uh, a the guy who put the killer away, right? So I think that's how we're introduced to we're, him. Okay, yeah, right. He goes and like, who is the killer? This is when we're finding out. And so okay, we have the killer. Right, this right, is the guy right. who he caught the killer. Yeah, he was in the. Uh, he, was he was in, in the, the room. He was in the operation. Yep. Or, yeah, right. the OR. Um, yeah. Jeff he's like, okay, fine. I want rid of the arm. Yeah. And so he goes to. Yeah, see, I think before we got into uh, moments where this was, it does end up happening to other people, I thought he would have to just deal with the psychology of it himself. And I really thought we'd end up to a point where he was, he would just take it into his own hands. Yeah. Haha. -ha. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. and then get rid of the arm well, himself. And, and I was thinking about. I was thinking about all these options, and I was like, "But this is mo this movie was made in '91, yeah. so no." Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's it? not going to be like a psychological thing. It's not going to be him chopping off his own arm. It's okay. actually going to be a haunted arm. Okay, because it's 1991. Right. Okay. That's what that was my conclusion <laughs> as we're like going through the movie. I'm like, no, no, so we're like not there yet. At some point, he's going to have to <laughs> exercise the ghost or something. You know? No, we're not there yet. In like, ten, <laughs> in like ten years, yeah, that's what it would have happened. But as you were watching it, like, where are you thinking that this is going? I mean, what is the conclusion of this? I guess that's what I had when I was watching. I'm is like, what I got? I, yeah. I thought he'd go crazy i'm like i can't see where this movie is going to tie it up it's going to be he has to get rid of the arm he's going to lose the arm somehow at a certain point before they uh did a few cuts that proved that it was impossible i you know you go the way of just like oh he's got a serial killer arm he's the one doing the killing mm -hmm. and he just doesn't know it so mm -hmm. that was an saying, option up to a certain point you're saying yeah. the killing see again we're late in the movie uh, and now all of a sudden they introduce the guys who have had the graphs yep. start getting killed. There's mm -hmm. not a big like selection of uh, uh, victims. There's two. Other, there's three guys total. Yes. Right. Uh, and there's not a whole selection of suspects. Right. Right. Because I think they do cover that scene wrong. He's in the hotel, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, the other guy calls and gets the answering machine. We're like, okay, if you just leave it there. Right. The guy calls and gets an answering machine. While he's on the phone, he gets attacked. Someone's breaking into the apartment that we hear while he's making that call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Suspicion. later. There would be suspicion on Jeff Fahey. He did, yep. you know, because we've been leading up. His psychology is breaking down. Right. He wouldn't know it. We wouldn't know it. Yep. There'd be questions everywhere. Yeah. But the movie doesn't play that way. Yep. It actually shows Jeff Fahey answer the, the, the phone and hears the attack, yep. gets the cop involved. They got to go over there. This is after the three guys have gone out, met up and gone out to the bar. Yep. Uh, that was the scene where they're <laughs> comparing notes and it was kind of just like, yeah, we're we're glad that we have this these. Yeah. Uh, body parts and they get into a fight with a local and uh uh the the guy with the legs gets to deliver his superhero kick <laughs> he does, yeah. he does. Mm -hmm. so he wants to get rid of the arm right uh because it's causing all sorts of mischief he thinks so he goes to the doctor what is she what's her position 
she what? says she says this this groundbreaking procedure is more important than anything you're dealing with. Right, and I will not have you taken away from yeah. me. Yeah, I will make sure you are end up in a mental hospital before you yeah. take that arm. Yeah, off. it was very before like, I take that arm. Yeah, off. Well, it, like, it, no, it, yeah. My Nobel Prize is more important than your discomfort. Yes, it was just like whoa. All right, yeah. damn. So she is evil doctor. Evil doctor. Um, but which she's I doing guess it for the good of all mankind, as all evil she's doctors crazy. do. <laughs> yeah. A mad, mad scientist. A mad scientist. Um, they all think they're doing it for the betterment of humanity. Yep. And that is the common thing. Yeah. Just like, you just don't see it. I do. Yeah. Everyone uh, will be better. They're Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, except it's just 50% of this guy's body. Right. So, I, But I guess this is setting up then more plot threads, right? Like, oh, if she's an evil doctor, yeah. then it's possible she knows more than what she's revealed going mm-hmm. in on it. Yep. Um, and, then we- and and we we all have that that moment in the OR from the beginning of the movie when we see the head removed. Yeah. It's we're all waiting for that to come back right. around. Yeah, cuz like, okay, the head's yeah. gone and everything and then well, you had an. In, uh, I think during Brad Dorff is during Brad Dorff's attack because they do uh legs guy legs uh eventually does get attacked and is uh, his legs are taken away from him mm-hmm. in a very gory fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff A goes to the apartment. It's been broken into. He finds legs on his bed, legs cut off and gone, a lot of blood. Um, and then uh, I think he calls the cops and the cops come over and then he's like, you need to check on this other guy. Yeah. I think his life's in yeah. danger. And so then we end up getting back to um, Brad Dorf and we hear the breaking in again and uh, Brad Dorf gets attacked. In an incredible fashion. Um, that was pretty good. It's great. Yeah. This is all great. Um, he gets his it, arm literally he gets, pulled, he's, pushed out he's a window. thrown out the window, and but then he's hanging on. By his arm. Yeah. Or by his arms. And then his one arm his, 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 uh, is ripped his, off. Is ripped off. <laughs> as the sound then. effects are oh. so. It's, and then, it, and then uh, he falls. Out the window in perfect timing on onto the cop, of the cop car, car. <laughs> that is driving up with Jeff A. He and the cop. It's spectacular. It's but, great. But also during the scene, you see a little bit of the person who's doing the attacking and he's got a neck brace on and as soon as i saw that neck brace i knew they fucking did a head transplant yeah. i knew it <laughs> and i was shouting it the entire time I'm like did they do it did they do it colin because colin i think is the only one who's seen this before it is a funny silhouette too it it's, is it's pretty comical there, there's, there's so movie. much that is horrifying yet also very funny it, in yes. this movie I, you, it's i mean can you imagine attacking and removing someone's limbs with a neck brace like yeah can't. that's what i'm saying like, it's like just, you can't it, it, but it's it. very frankenstein yeah. yeah, 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 at that yeah. point and I, that may be like, aside from keeping your head on yeah, yeah. part of yeah. it is like oh uh, uh, <laughs> and then ripping body parts off okay. it's fantastic so it's who great. got the like it, who got the best deal in this situation right probably legs guy like if i had to pick one of these body parts to have well no we talked about how legs you might lose control and just run it yeah run somewhere i'd rather, you don't I'd rather be. be an arm yeah non-dominant arm i think right probably, yeah you yeah, know my left arm I can deal with yeah. that and everything. Yeah. And maybe you Getting become an artist. Getting the head, though, so much worse Who's... than anything else. <laughs> right? Oh, Who's my the... God. <sighs> I, think the, I think the artist was the best case scenario. Yeah. I think it was so. his left hand. Yep. He was thriving. Right. He, and he was doing fine until yeah, he got he, taken off yeah, of him. He was, he was real happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brad Dorf was doing good. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. Well, um, I, I mean, it's... it. And Jeff A, he's like, uh, I'm, I'm going to be next. This is where we finally have like crazy looking Jeff A. This is him in the car, just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big now, jacket, so with the good. Collar up, the yeah. collar's up, and his hair, yeah, like the hair swoop, yeah. and he's just like, that man is on the edge, the ragged yeah. edge. There is a scene that happens here, which I think is the best scene in the movie. Ooh, do tell. Um, well, because Eric Red, he's shooting because I was like, this is like a John Carpenter setup, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff A, he and the cop are in a patrol car leaving mm-hmm. the scene, I, and they stop at a was stop not light. expecting this. I <laughs> loved this scene. I was not expecting like, car chase to be the climax of this movie. Yeah, no. and not just the car chase, coming. Colin. Yeah. Well, we see the headlights coming up behind, out yep. of focus. It's very John Carpenter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The car pulls up next to them, and I, even the way that they cut to... The guy sitting in the car... It's, if, it's a slow move over just to let you know that something's happening yeah. as the other car pulls up to him. And then, it, yeah, then it gets really quick and violent with that cut because it happens real quick. Because otherwise you'd be, have a good look at him. So right. it cuts away and then he pulls up next to him and it's the head transplant dude. Yeah. So this is Charles uh, Fletcher. Fletcher. This is Charles. Uh, his head on another body. And he is, yes, out reclaiming his body reclaiming parts. Reclaiming his body parts. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Jeff Fahey's smoking. He's got his hand out the window. 
and uh, the guy reaches over and handcuffs him. Self to Jeff Fahey. Right. So they are wrist to wrist handcuffed between two cars and a chase scene ensues. Yes. And I was not expecting this. And this was great. It's yep. brilliant. This, yeah. I, I'm just like, yes, I never knew I wanted this. But yeah. there's so much tension and like, wh- which way does this go? Does it come off as easily as Brad Dorff's ha- arm right. did? Does it get smashed into something? Does he have to go into the other car and end up with the killer in order to get out of this in one piece? Uh, what, what, yeah. So and much all, can and happen. all of those scenarios almost happen. Almost happen. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> almost happen. And it's a great scene. And yeah. It's tension and everything. Yeah. Uh, and, and even ooh. the logistics, you're going like, okay, how how do you shoot this? Yeah. You know, I mean, I assume it was some kind of breakaway. Uh, uh, in case you, know. you had to. But there, I also imagine there's got to be a, a lot of setups. Because for a scene like this, because they're keeping speed, I guess, yes. in the oncoming traffic, right? Yeah, so, but in, in the in order to shoot it, you'd have to do because I figure you have to do a lot of quick cutting in order to keep the tension going, and also not to reveal that no one was in danger at this right. point to to kind of hide the stunt. So in case something should happen, so I met like they've got it uh, inside the car, outside for different angles, and, and you know I imagine they got to do it just to just to cover all that stuff. But it's just cr- craziness. Like again, never seen anything like this before. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Really good. I'm I was surprised. This like, movie surprised me. Yeah. Tonight. Am I having a flashback in Maniac Cop Two? Is there like somebody handcuffed? Like on the hood of a, or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen. There's it. A, there's no a I've only good. done the first one on the show. Yeah, actually. I've never there's, seen. There's it. a chase scene in yeah. the second one that's pretty gotcha. good. Um, so, well, I guess yeah. He ends up it, shooting the handcuffs. I was kind of disappointed by that. To be <laughs> yeah, honest same. with you, right. it seemed like right. okay. He gets the cop's gun and at you know however fast they're going is able to directly shoot the right. uh, the the chain in the handcuffs. Yeah. But I am like okay, you know. At this moment, I am I am shocked at what is happening because this was unexpected. I like I was saying, I, I felt this was a more I, I going. It felt like a more grounded movie going into this, and then we get to a certain point where a head transplant dude comes up, handcuffs himself to Jeff Fahey, and then we get this scene <laughs> and the scene right after. Oh, that was great. Which is just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Because they do separate, and the, the the killer does end up getting away, but he crashes, he spins out in a in one of the best spin outs in oh, cinema it's, history, it's I wonderful. would say. It's, it's wonderful. beautiful. He's sliding across it like he's on ice, and he crashes into another car, and his car is on fire and everything, and at this point, he has to collect all the body parts that yes. he's gotten so <laughs> far out of his on fire car. There's an arm sitting on the dash, yeah. two legs in the back. He's got to collect them, and then he does the superhero walking it's away the from the explosion. Shot, yeah. But he's got body parts he's holding it's over fantastic. his shoulders. <laughs> it's great. And then he falls down, and then the doctor shows up to collect him and take him back to the laboratory, yeah. the laboratory. Yeah, she shows up, and she's I like, was in shock. The Because, you know, I mean, aside from, like, uh, how did she know how to be there? But, you know, she approaches him, and Probably you're like, well, how's around. this going to you know, uh, happen uh, the meeting between them, but she like throws a coat over his shoulder, like, <laughs> oh, she's definitely like, this is her baby. She's comforting her monster. Yeah, her yeah. monster. Uh, you've been through a lot. Come back yeah. with me. I, I was really you. hoping he was going to slap her with the arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But he trusts her because yeah, uh, yeah. So did they have an arrangement beforehand, or did she explain this once he uh, became conscious with you know, on his new body? I don't know. She also, but he he should also be conflicted because he should be like, well, you did cut my head off as well. Yeah, I'm in the situation because of you. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, but also, ow. Unless he blames <laughs> Zake Smokey, but he never never. He's just kind of ejected from the movie. I think after yeah. the car chase, yeah, Jeff Fay steals his car. And drives to the clinic for the uh, climactic showdown. Yeah. Um, what is what does Jeff Fahey find in in the clinic? He finds because he ends up going there. He writes his last journal entry to his wife, to his wife Karen. I love you. I thought yeah. those were kind of like unnecessary, to be honest with you. Like it the felt constant like, journal entries. Yeah, it felt like there was a probably a, a bigger part in the movie that got cut out in which they would make more sense or have more impact. But you're right. I don't feel like they did too much. I think, it, I think it like was a, just for the wrap up at the end. Probably. And to give him like a constant emotional attachment yeah. to her, even right. when she's off screen for so long. Yeah. Just to yeah, tether him yeah. to that, I guess. Yeah. Um, he's like, I, I hope you know what I, ha- th- this is what I have to do or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's very dramatic in his yeah. writing. 
Um, but it, it, I mean, it's all going to end up in a book later on. But yeah. uh, before that, I mean, he does be- go back to the clinic, walks into the. Uh, there's a, a surprising lack of security for what is going on mm-hmm. in this clinic. Right. Yeah, he figured that he wouldn't be able. Because well, this is all secret, right? You're not right. doing this above board. You've yeah, got not criminal, at all. <laughs> Especially when he walks into an operating room in which there are body parts in a glass case connected to. I love that pipe, and they're all still going. <laughs> like the torso is there, still breathing, suspended, still going, breathing, even? quote unquote. Yeah, suspended. The tank. arms are moving. This thing's twitching. And everything because you got to clean them, it's maybe the poster. You gotta put them in saline or something before I you. Know. I don't know, I don't know the process of taking a human yeah. apart and putting them back together. Colin. <laughs> I have no idea, but it's great to the effect is great, it's great to look at. Um, so he ends up there, but then so are the doctor and the doctor's assistant. She's like, We're ready to take that arm back now mm-hmm. if you'd like to give it up. This arm is fucking killing me. I, I we forgot about that. He does. Line. He does. There's a lot of there's some early Jeff Fahey yelling about the arm in this, and it's very funny. It, it's very good, but it's also just very funny. Mm-hmm. But he ends up the uh, conflict between you know him and the doctor. He's got his gun. He's gonna shoot her, but then you know, um, I think the the killer he shows up. Yeah, clocks him on the back of the right, head. He's got a shotgun and everything. Yeah. And uh, so then Jeff Fahey ends up on the operating table and we're like, oh man, how's he going to get out of this one? Because now he's strapped down. They're putting the gas on him. They put the gas on him. Like, uh, maybe they shouldn't have gone that far. Because this feels like one of those things where like, he did it because of the sheer will of not wanting to do it. You know what I mean? Wasn't it the the superpower of the arm? Yeah, because he breaks out of a restraint, Mm -hmm. does all that. So, I mean, sure, the arm's working for him now. Yeah. And he starts punching people around. He does. Uh, the killer Charles comes into the operating room, right? Because yes. this is like, oh no, the doctor is in jeopardy, and the whole enterprise is. I think he blasts all the, or no, not yet. No, all the he, body parts. He, he breaks out and he, he he punches the assistant. What happens to the doctor? He does punches he her too. Punches her out. Yeah. He punches everybody. It's awesome. Just punching people. Um, I kind of wish legs was there to kick people, but whatever. <laughs> uh, punches everybody out. He he grabs a shotgun. He shoots all the body parts in the glass cage. Yeah. Um. Well, he gets into a, like a, a a fight with Charles, right? Yes, the fight with the killer with first. Because Charles has got a shotgun and is trying to kill him. Right. But they get into close quarters yeah. combat, and he rips the neck brace. Uh, right. Fahey rips the neck brace off. And then snaps his neck. Which I guess is okay. He can do that because he's got killer super strength arm right and i don't think it's necessarily uh maybe the head's not on there too tight right because it has been recently attached right it's easier to snap a neck i don't know i'm guessing yeah but it seems like it's easier to snap a neck when it's already been you know removed from the body yeah but he doesn't rip the head right off or anything which i thought was what was going to happen yeah but But he snaps the neck so the guy's paralyzed laying on the ground going and has to watch (laughs) as Fahey he blasts destroys his body all of his body parts yep in the tank. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, and he thinks it's over, and he makes a phone call to the cop. He's like, I'm at the clinic. Shit has gone down. Please come here. Um, Charles grabs the gun and starts shooting away again. And, uh, he kills the kills, doctor, kills the doctor. Uh, on accident. Right, yeah. And then, but Jeff Hay, Jeff Hay grabs a shotgun and uh, shoots him. Gory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blast that right guy's head off. Yeah. He, he go. That's it. Um. So the resolution then, right, is um, Jeff Fahey becomes at one with his arm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But he he, says it's basically because ever since, you know, Charles was killed, I stopped having the vision. So the idea, (laughs) I think, has been that, like, even though he was grafted, the other guy's leg. Destroy the brain. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. So because the other guy was still alive, uh, he was still having, like, a conscious attachment to him. Yeah. And now that he's dead, he doesn't. I actually saw a thing on, like, 2020, like, years ago. Uh-huh. Where they took the cells on? from this woman and then they uh, kept them in a room. And then she went walking down like a, an alley or something and they monitored her uh, anxiety level. And the cells in the room reacted with the same, you know, as she, even though they were separated by a great distance. That's rad. Mm-hmm. Okay. You saw this on what? So you're saying like I can never get rid of my anxiety. No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> never. <Fuck. laughs> Stuck with it. <laughs> can't literally I mean, run you away can, from you it. Take it off you and, and monitor it <laughs> apparently in a different room. Yeah. That's, what do you guys think about that? I know this is a, that's a big question to get into, but like, do you think that shit, I mean, you saw it Quantum on, you saw entanglements, on my friend. You think that's possible? You think that energy can like 
from one distance to another that can be affected. Yes. I mean, yeah. time's a flat circle and it's yeah. not really distance I mean, after I live all. in a world where <laughs> chocolate is a delicious thing for me, but it'll kill my dog. That doesn't make any sense to me. I know there's science that backs it up, but like these sound okay. like made up rules, so anything's possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kind of, right. yeah. right. you know? yeah. Well, they say that's basically how it is. Once yeah. you get down to like the quantum level, it's like then it's like just make believe, but it works, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so then we get a nice still life painting at the end as he finishes his last drill <laughs> entry. Which was that was I don't know. I that thought that weird. whole thing ended with weird. a thud. Yeah. And oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, he yeah. ended with a joke, but it wasn't funny at all. And no, he made a joke about it, which it's also only, wasn't funny. It's not even a joke. It's just he's putting in the truth, and he says it's going to come off as a joke because I don't think they know. I don't know what story he's telling to the public in this book he's yeah. writing. About so, evil. No sure. Of so, evil. But who knows what they're going to believe. But whatever it is he puts in there as truth, it, he thinks is going to come off as a joke to everybody else. But yeah. we've it, been through this journey. We know it's not a and joke. And it clearly doesn't land because his wife's like, oh, okay. Right. And, she's like, and then she's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love that. She's like, it's great, honey. It's, but this it's defense would never hold up in court. You could never be like, I, I would l- judge I committed these crimes because my arm was being controlled by a yeah. serial killer who was still alive who made me do it. <laughs> now, I, this is the aftermath that I want to see. The, the court, courtroom drama. The courtroom sequel. drama of yes. trying to explain all the shit yes. that just happened. <laughs> yeah. Your Honor, he drove up next to me and handcuffed yeah. me to his dead body. Right. And we drove around for a little bit trying in that struggle. Right. Uh, and then he, the tattoo is going to be real hard for him to explain for his defense. Is like, well, you have a tattoo of someone who was on death row. Right. You know? It's like, well, the doctor's dead. I don't know how to explain this. Yeah. yeah. And there's yeah, probably right. no records. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, well uh, they might be. This the place like doesn't burn down. I, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Well, there's, I think there's plenty of physical evidence to explain. You know, explain place, how they were yeah. doing their Some side project in the same office. This yeah. is, I have right, a feeling. Yeah. And it was, like it was all over the news. Yeah. Yeah. They, they know about Yeah, it. I think yeah. they could trace this around and be like, well, it's fucking weird, but he's right. Yeah. Whether yeah. or not he was possessed by, his arm was possessed by the soul of a serial killer, we don't know. But there, There's a werewolf movie like that where the whole thing takes place in a courtroom. And, and someone's on trial. Movie? Yeah, and someone is on trial for murder. Do we get a guilty and verdict and then? Out, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> right. It's not very good. All What's right. it called? Where, it can't where? be if I guess the ending. Where? Oh, that's where. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Yes. I mean, so the title kind of gives it away, yeah. unfortunately. But it would have been nice if they hid all of that. And was it was it you. supposed to be like a uh, you don't know which one? No, or the, the other trailer going up heavily implied that uh, there was something supernatural happening. It would it'd be better if it was like straight courtroom drama. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, yes, and, and have that just, be the third act. And that's the reveal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been good. Mm-hmm. Um, but so no, the, we get a still life. The ending's very awkward because of that, right? It's just basically them sitting against a tree as the camera pulls back. And yeah, she's the like sitting are, on, or he's like sitting on her. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't move for two minutes or whatever. Contemplating um, everything they've been through for the past hour and a half. Did you read, I can't remember, because for some reason it's coming to me that that may have been a reshoot. Uh, it's an alternate ending. Oh. I'm not positive. Is it the ending that the alternate ending that I wanted as the um, post credit scene in which we find out that the killer's heart went to somebody else? And, dun, dun, dun. and then the story continues on. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that would have been cool, but Damn. it didn't happen. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure. I can't remember if I'm misremembering something, okay. but it seems to me there was something because it's just an odd way to end the movie. Yeah. Um, and then credits and yeah. then, then, then you're out. Yeah. Um, well, I guess uh, now you've heard us talk about it, but did we like it? Would we recommend that you watch it? For that, you're going to have to stick with us. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our body parts man. <laughs> Igor, bring us the mail. It's our body man. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Did you see he put on his fancy body parts tonight? Yeah. <laughs> As celebration for this movie? Is he, pop them is off he like a Mr. Potato on. Head? He is. He put on his good arms tonight. <laughs> his tonight but you parts. look sharp, yep. Igor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should let the uh, good folks at home know how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Apparently. About, <laughs> <laughs> threads. Our popularity hey, grows. Threads. Thank you for following along. On <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, about tonight's movie, Body Parts, Teresa Ann writes in and says, they did the nightmare 
Hi- Highway to Hell before Final Destination 2 did. Mm-hmm. This movie is very underrated. Uh, Nick Siebel says this is an underrated gem. I just revisited this film about a year ago. Such a good watch. Forgotten early 90s body horror film. Yeah. Richard Kratzer says, yes, yes, yes. This is a definition of a Saturday Night Freak Show movie. Great pick, gang, and way overdue. Mm-hmm. The premise is yep. crazy, but I love it. I'm curious as to if this was your mailman, Igor's origin story. That's what I said during the movie. <laughs> you many, are correct, sir. How many body parts is that sidekick made out oh, of? Oh, we lost track of so, uh, yeah. yeah, it's they're not. All, there's, yeah, sometimes there's, they got to be replaced, too. You right? should see yeah. the family tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael Whitaker says. None of, it is, none of him is original. <laughs> yeah. uh, not anymore. Uh, Michael Whitaker says this one had one of the better VHS box covers, as I recall, and might be the most recognizable movie based on the transplant victim possessed by the killer trope i can think of i wonder if this character and mark hamill's character from body bags get together and swap stories uh, <laughs> nice. oh is that one the one where we made that weird sex face yes yeah. yes i rewatched yeah. body bags last halloween that sh- i still enjoyed that shit oh too. yeah that's it's fun if for nothing else john carpenter said the time fun, of his yeah. life is that <laughs> and yeah. the well and the first yeah. the gas station attendant was yeah. legitimately scary right like, with Wes craven oh, yeah. shows yeah. up in the back mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. one's good that's good yeah watch yeah. body bags that's a fun one uh nelson nascimento says can't you see this arm is killing me. <laughs> he says, I unabashedly love this movie and I'm looking forward to the review. <laughs> uh, last week, we watched a movie called Salem's Lot. Roll Tide Zoe says, how can anyone watch this and doubt Toby Hooper was really the one filming Poltergeist? I can feel Spielberg's fingerprints on it, but Life Force and Texas Chainsaw 2 feel like they're the same style and ambience. I agree. I, I, uh, because of the gooiness of Poltergeist, I go Toby Hooper. Because it gets yeah. real gooey mm-hmm. at certain points. I'm like, that's Toby Hooper. Mm-hmm. And we were saying there were scenes in Salem's Lot, um, you know, the uh, cabinets flapping around. Yeah. Right. It felt very yeah. Poltergeist. That's, yeah. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maya Madsen says, weirdly, I love Stephen King, but I find this book boring. I prefer the movie. Uh, James Mace says, I saw this as a kid when it originally aired. Ralphie Glick at the window scared me senseless, and yet I loved it and couldn't wait for part two the next week. I rewatched it just a couple of weeks ago, and the scares are still really powerful, but what really jumped out at me this time was how dryly funny James Mason is as mm-hmm. Straker, what an absolute knockout Bonnie Bedelia is, and that David Soul, while good, is probably the weakest member of the cast. Anyway, it's still a classic, and I have it in my physical media collection he might be yeah mm-hmm. uh, all good points all good points v patricia clark says uh still so scary danny glick at the window yeah i'm telling you this is yeah, like that's everyone like, generation. as we're Tra- sitting here threads is lighting up uh, people <laughs> <laughs> from that post of danny glick uh, uh traumatized generation revisited in many other vampire movies mm-hmm. uh, uh, uh buffy the vampire's like you're, you're flying man the scene at the window yes it yeah, is classic. lost boys did it, it is with classic the, mm-hmm. Um, Steve Carney says the two open the window scenes still scare me yep. and the glowing yellow eyes are very creepy. Yep. I think this would make a good double feature with Phantasm, which was released the same year. James Boyce says the 112 minute version has a spooky momentum that is definitely a plus over the three hour slog. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure which is the better adaptation because I haven't watched the full cut in years, but there's a lot of great imagery that Toby Hooper deserves credit for. Yes. Uh, Ajo3085 says, I live in Australia and my brother and I watched Salem's Lot with a mate while we were in high school in the 80s and there were moments that scared the crap out of us. Mm -hmm. My brother and I have also surfed together for 40 years and about 20 years ago we were sitting on our boards behind the shore break having a bit of a breather and a small great white shark swam right underneath us. It had zero interest in us but we got out of the water pretty quickly regardless and I can still remember that as we were almost out of the water my brother said, well, that wasn't nearly as scary as Mr. Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of us wow. just falling about laughing. Wow. That is wow. an effective movie yeah. to make you forget about a great That's white shark. Crazy. Bra- <laughs> Bravo. Wow. That's Bravo. a great story. I'm glad we're big in Australia. Uh, <laughs> Bill Hainer points out that David Soul in the movie can never quite get that canvas door closed on the Jeep and they no. just had it around it. And he you can really tell can. he's getting increasingly more frustrated by it, too, because <laughs> he, he just keeps throwing it he around. He does. He, he really can. Mm-hmm. And uh, the tattooed Nana says, I was teaching high school then when one of my students who was an Orthodox, who's Orthodox Jewish, came into the class after having watched it the night before. It scared him so much he couldn't sleep, and he said, I'm so glad we don't believe in the devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's 
Awesome. Uh, you were scared, really my friend. Funny. I think you do. <laughs> that's really funny. Someone, that's the, great. You could write a book on all the people that were traumatized and all their short it's, stories. It's still, still happening oh, yeah. like as yeah. we're sitting yeah. here. We're getting Tom's more. getting notifications. Yeah. Um, the week before, we watched a movie called Bats, and Travis Legler Bats. says, So, Sean, my brother from another mother, <laughs> has commanded me to watch a movie? Well, sir, your wish is my command, and if you like this, then you have to try Carnosaur 2. No! <laughs> I will not! Well, I'm sorry. An update. I have watched it, and movies like this are why the freak show will never die. This is lower <laughs> budget Tremors type <laughs> film, but a lot of fun and should be watched with a group of friends. You're not going to watch Carnosaur 2? Unless I am uh, forced to, and I'm not saying it would take a lot of force, <laughs> but unless I'm, unless someone makes me, I will not be watching Carnosaur 2. Now, I know because it was the same director between Bats and Carnosaur, mm-hmm. right? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't get enough out of the first Carnosaur for me to go for the second one as much as I There's love sequels. There's always listener choice month. There's always a listener choice month. If you can Travis, game the system still, and yep. make it happen, I'll watch it because I have to, but I don't think I'm going to be going for Carnosaur 2. How many of those are? There's like four. Maybe five. But you only have to watch the second one? I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for Listening, writing in. Listeners' choice polls open in three months. <laughs> they get it. They close. do. Start Make drafting your list, your list now. now. Yeah. <laughs> Figure out uh, how to game a, uh, a, a Facebook uh, survey. And, yeah. yeah and we're there. Um, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Body Parts, starting with Holly, because you're back I'm after back. a two week absence I know. and Here we I missed am. you. Uh, tell us what you thought of tonight's movie, Body Parts. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a fun movie. This was this was a good time. Um I think we were all we were all gripped the entire time. I think this, so. This was mm-hmm. this was a fun one. Um I I I think the only thing that I didn't care for was that weird ending. That, just the seeing still just, life this, ending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need a little more of a me- the, the journal was like, "Oh, I'm writing a book and then sitting in the park." Like it yeah. was it was a very odd choice to to go out on i can only imagine the filmmaker's thought process was we just went through this intense experience let's let them come down off of it which i don't agree with necessarily mm-hmm. when it comes to movies i'm just like if you went through that entire process and like hit them and then get yeah. out i mean i thought it would be like a like oh i've got control of my hand now and everything's fine and then there's just like one last little like right well like, he's got his hand on the thing and it like twitches towards a knife real quick and then we cut yeah. to it's like yeah. the x-men three yes yeah, yeah. The X-Men 3 like, that's right. what, like the power's still there yeah. that's yeah. what it should that's be. what just, I thought yeah. they were gonna Twitch do. And then you're just like, that's, the black. That would have made that sense. That would have given a, a nice little punch, like yeah. to round yeah. out the movie. That would have been perfect. Yep. So that's my biggest complaint about this. Otherwise, it was fun. That's... It was it was super fun, start to finish. Um, the effects were gory and great, and explosions, car chases. I had no idea there was so much packed into this movie. <laughs> right, no idea this was this movie. I had no idea. Like I had heard. Like I'd heard things about body parts, and I knew it was like, okay, we need to watch this. At We've some all heard point. things about body parts. On right, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> like I knew we needed to watch it, but I had no idea there was so much packed into this movie. Yeah, like it was a fun ride, start to finish. You 100 percent have to watch body parts. It's a good time. It's definitely a freak show movie. Colin, what did you think? Uh, well, I just looked up. There was no alternate ending, so okay. that was apparently huh. what was it's all uh, your head, man. Are, all do you have an appendage that's making you see these things? <laughs> <laughs> what has been replaced on you, sir? What? He's like has, an ear. Yeah. That's it. Um, I hear the devil. I, I, copyright 2024, Ooh, a Saturday hear, Freak I Show. I hear, the devil, I hear the devil. A guy who got his ear replaced, <laughs> and now he just hears. Sh- okay. There he did. I see game. the devil. I've seen it. I see the devil. Yeah. So I think we can add I that into devil, it yeah. maybe yeah. halfway like he's all, through. Like he's always been like fully deaf his entire life, and now there's like this new type of hearing aid that, like, sure, but he's getting he can, odd hear, for, he can hear for the first time. So but he doesn't know that he shouldn't be hearing the. De- oh, this is good. What do we call it? Whoa. <laughs> I, hear I hear the, the devil. devil. I hear the devil. Yeah. But yeah. isn't that a movie? I saw the devil. I saw the devil. All right, we got to think. That's gotta, like a serial killer. Right, we got to think so of something different. a different title. But I, this is a good idea. I like this. Yeah. Yes. we're doing it. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm on the fence about it. To be honest with you, I know that there's okay. So the 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 pros uh, are um, that opening car uh, crash made an impression. The car chase later on yep. made an impression. I like the people who are in it. I liked uh, Jeff Fahey. I liked uh, when Brad Dorif uh, showed up because he was, uh, you know, he's Brad Dorif. He livens up Wait, anything. Isn't this in. your copy? It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Me, I just check. wanted to ask. Uh, yeah, but all right. Colin gets movies Continue. for free. I just want to point that out. Uh, so continue. Um, <laughs> the so like I said on the fence. Uh, well, no, let's go with middle of the road. 
I guess it doesn't feel like it completely landed it. I think I had this problem with like Bad Moon also. Like Eric Red's movies are like okay. almost there, but don't quite like deliver. This so what one, wasn't? I what, mean, I think what didn't I, hit or wrap up for you. Well, I think I I, I was like you know, like going to go through it all again, but I think during the review, you know, as we were talking about it, I was like pointing everything out. I'm yeah. like, um, but I think because uh, you know, and I also have like this gap of time that I remember the first impression where it really didn't make much of an impression okay. in the theater in 1991. But then again, you know, I was seeing everything. So this was right. like a lesser uh, horror movie at that time. Then seeing it again on video, I'm like, Oh, there's actually some good, you know, you appreciate it better. Cause you like, I appreciate how, you know, things that was made that were, there was right. that and one everything scene. you saw that got you to there. You, yeah. pre- you appreciate it more over time. And there was that happen. scene uh, where we were like the cinematographers pat himself on the back because <laughs> oh, yeah, the like, neon, neon was, lights and yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like this film noir shot of <laughs> uh, Jeff Fahey shot. <laughs> in the hotel room, looking out at like the neon signs and he's mm-hmm. like lit red with a green yep. light coming in. And then there's backlight the, in the room. The, the, it was I'm like, sorry, is this not like Viagra for you, Colin? It was a very cool. Okay. Uh, I mean, I noticed it. Like, Manhunter, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so but there's other shots like that where I was like, Oh, that's a nice shot, you know. So it's like, I respect how it's put together from that. I think the problem uh, is like in the yeah, uh, yeah. body parts, different. Yeah, I don't even know if it's the screenplay or if it's the direction, to be honest with you. Maybe it's the I'm gonna go with direction. I think it's the the choice of shots because I know that you know they cover stuff from you know they do like multiple takes. I, yeah. I just wonder if they took some of the wrong takes and there was uh some music like moments that felt like they needed a musical score that didn't have it. Yeah, it's pretty uh stark. Yeah, even though there is like this big symphonic yeah orchestral score, it's just it's it's in a weird place. So it's like it's a patchwork movie, which is kind of ironic, you know, because <laughs> but it just um I th- I would recommend it to you because there's enough here that's interesting, and I think you know especially to this audience. Um, but I didn't think it was entirely successful, right? As uh, you know, like oh, this is a, a forgotten classic or a, an unra- underrated gem. You're being picky. I'm being picky, <laughs> but I'm saying ultimately that I did. I liked it enough. You know. Okay. So there you go, <laughs> Michaela. What do you think? I. I mean, I feel like it delivered on the title and the premise and everything, yeah. and then some. Like, I mean, yeah. I would have been happy if this had been even more of a bottle movie about just like, I guess I would have been Evil Dead too then, right? If it had just been yeah. Jeff Fahey going, going crazy, crazy yeah, yeah. with that. Uh, yeah, but I, I watched that movie too, you know? Yeah. Um, I yeah I agree with Holly. I think the ending is really the only thing, but it's like it's like an A minus. You yeah, know? it's like it's really not <laughs> right. that important in the grand scheme of things. I it's like oh that was dumb, but I just watched I, something great. Exactly, yeah. um, it was thoroughly entertaining. I'm kind of sad that it, this movie doesn't get more attention. Like mm-hmm. I never hear it really t- mentioned in passing. I, I had heard of it, but like right, but it doesn't have like a cult following or anything. It seems yeah, like it, it should. Does. It feels like it should be celebrated yeah. a, little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. I stand by my statement last week that May is for girls and body parts is for boys. <laughs> um, so uh, I am glad to have seen the, the, the both sides of the coin now. Um, I loved it. I mean, it, like I said, it gave me everything I wanted and then more. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it was done so earnestly and sincerely. And I appreciate that. It's not winking at the camera. It's not being like, isn't this ridiculous? No. That's what idle hands would do, you know? <laughs> right. um, no, it comes very close yeah. with this arm is killing me. Yeah. But, other, but then it reels it in after that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I had a great time with it. You got to see it. I, I am sad. I've gone this long in my life without seeing it. So. Sean, what do you think? I am also sad I have gone this long yeah. without seeing this yeah. movie. I really like this movie. I was uh, shocked, uh, shocked by this movie, I say. Um, again, I had no idea. Again, uh, we knew the basic premise, and that was about it. But the places it decides to go, um, unexpected and pretty great. I didn't know that we would get, um, I, I didn't know that we would get uh a head transplant with a serial killer coming back, recollecting his body parts. I didn't know that we would get uh, the Avengers of body parts and that he would go <laughs> and find legs and Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf is an unexpected surprise in this yeah. movie. I loved every scene he was in. I think he's great. I think everyone's great in this movie. Everyone's doing, um, mm-hmm. everyone's doing the best. Um, uh, it, it is surprisingly um, gory in certain parts, but it doesn't like, and I keep going back to like the leg scene. I'm just like, you get he he enters the room, turns on the light. You see it. You're shocked by it, and then it's gone. Like I like that it's it's doing those 
those moments to hit you with it and then it moves on with the rest of the story um uh, yeah i think everyone's jeff fay he's doing you know he, he's calm but then he's wild his eyes are doing all the work in this movie um i think it's written pretty well i think every actor is is bringing the best they can do to this movie and i think it's pretty great um shocked by where it goes i was not expecting the handcuffed car chase scene which i like somebody steal that and bring it back for a different movie if they haven't already like just in a regular cop movie um yeah real real fun like i'm very surprised at this movie uh really liked it uh, you gotta watch body parts it mm-hmm. should be known a little bit more i think yeah. or it should be ref uh if uh, referenced a little bit more mm-hmm. um which you know you know you read i read a lot of articles I about like, movies i think it will now on the show I, th- I think so <laughs> um yeah had a real good time with this god damn it uh yeah damn body parts i recommend it that was good yeah well, that, that was a good it's... movie hour hour and a half mm-hmm. Lo- yeah that's that. another letter grade <laughs> yeah, up for yeah. me in out and on with your life <laughs> Unlike um, every movie made today. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're talking about the two and a half hour Batman movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, Body Parts, hour and a half, entertaining from front to back. Uh, go watch it now. Well, four recommends means it is Freak Show approved, and awesome. that means you're contractually obligated by listening to this show to watch it. Indeed. Next week, we're watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly. Me. What are we going to watch next week? Are we getting into October yet? Or are we still September? Uh, it'll October. be released October. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is your October pick. Right. Uh, probably. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I'm putting it to you guys. Oh, no. I'm going to give you two categories. Oh, no. I'm not going to tell you the movie. <laughs> I like You're this. going right, to like pick this. which category you'd rather watch. Okay. Okay? Okay, I like this. Options. Would you rather watch a sequel or a trauma movie? A sequel. A sequel. A sequel. A sequel? <laughs> yeah. Next week we are watching Psycho 2. All right. Psycho two. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm down with this. All right. So what was the other option? That's Rabbit like- grannies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My trauma tolerance is not very high. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't feel safe picking a trauma movie to Sight unseen. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Not knowing yeah. anything about it. So yes. I'll go with the sequel. As uh, what'd you think I was gonna pick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you won't like Carnosaur too, though. It was That's gonna be sequel. two out of three, so it just yeah, yeah. yeah. But you understand why I wouldn't watch Carnosaur two, right? No, you did. Uh, all right, you fine. Be no, that's fine. No, it's completely legitimate. If you don't understand it, no, maybe I'm wrong. I don't understand. Maybe I'm wrong. But no, I'm glad we're going with the sequel. Psycho 2. Psycho 2. Psycho 2. Okay. So uh, tune in next week for that. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.